Ever since the first trailer for the new Fire Emblem, we've been curious what the full game would be like. We suspected that there was a strong emphasis on choice and saw that a player character would once again be in the game. So the idea of choosing sides came naturally in our last analysis. But we never would have guessed that the player character would be the main character as well. This is our story and as such we can choose whichever side we want. It's never that simple though. There are always secrets and hidden details to be found and our master tactician, the old analysis machine, will certainly lead us to them. Of course, be sure to watch our previous Fire Emblem analysis as we'll be referring back to it here. So let's not waste any more time and get right to it. With this trailer we finally learn the two factions names. The western styled army is part of the country of Nor, while the eastern style one is called the Hoshido. Right off the bat we see the two armies lined up against each other readying for battle. Thanks to translations from throughout the trailer we now know that the Nor leader is Marx, while the Hoshido fighter with the lightning sword is named Ryoma. It seems to be an intense fight but this time we get a better look at Ryoma's back. When he leaps into the air we can see that the symbol for the Mark of the Exalt or the Mark of Naga is embroidered there. This means that the Divine Dragon Tribe could have a purpose in this war. In fact, the presence of a dragon head on Marx's shield could mean that the Nor have a connection to dragons as well. What if this war is begun because the sides have different opinions or even beliefs in Naga and the Dragon Tribe? It could be the key element that places this in the same universe as many other Fire Emblem games. There's more proof to this as well but we'll get into it properly much later. In the meantime, let's get to know each side before the player has to make his or her choice. We'll start with the Hoshido first. In one scene we see what looks to be the capital of Hoshido. Right away there's more dragon imagery with a statue in the town square. Everything about the Hoshido is influenced by eastern culture, specifically Japan, from the style of the buildings to the townspeople themselves. We can even see the royal family's castle in the background on top of a cliff. But the focal point here is the young woman at the base of the statue giving a speech to the people. Is she preparing them for war or is something else going on? At any rate, it gives the sense that the royal family treats their subjects well, and she is indeed royalty or at least important since soldiers are standing amongst the civilians. Even Ryoma is watching from the crowd along with another girl who we'll meet very soon. More important is the person behind the woman giving the speech because that's the player, or Kamui as the default name. Notice the way the cutscene blocks the face with a hat. We're pretty sure we'll see other tricks like this in the game's cutscenes. She then turns to face Kamui, providing a better look at her. While we never learn anything else about this woman in the trailer, we believe that she is probably the eldest of the royal family, maybe even the queen. Having her dressed all in white gives a sense of purity which is reinforced by the ornament in her hair. It resembles the sun which could mean that it's a divine symbol since she's already wearing something at her brow. Could it be possible that instead of being part of the royal family, she's actually a very important religious figure? There's not enough evidence to say for sure but we do know that she says thank goodness when she sees Kamui. So she already knows the player or has met him before this scene. As we learned, the player was born in Hoshido before being raised in Nor. Is this the first time she's seen Kamui since the return or is this after a dangerous battle? The sense we get from the cutscene is that this is before the war properly begins, so we're thinking the former. In another scene we get a better look at Hoshido Castle. As we'll see later when we take a look at the Nor, even the color palette is noticeably different between the two. Hoshido is bright and completely open, giving a sense of freedom. The colors are soft too which often provides an inviting feeling. But in Nor, that's not the case. Things have a harder edge and the space often feels cramped and confining. The colors are all muted or outright black, even normally brighter colors like purple. The best example of this are the two cute younger sister characters. The one on the Nor side is dressed darkly with more of a gothic Lolita style, while the Hoshido sister, the same girl we saw standing next to Ryoma, is dressed simply and with warmer colors. The dichotomy that Intelligent Systems is creating between the two is fascinating given that the Nor are clearly meant to be seen as more evil than the Hoshido. We finally get to see more of Ryoma in a scene in front of the throne, so he's definitely at least a prince. Amusingly, even the throne is multicolored. However, Ryoma is telling Kamui that he is his older brother by blood. This and the many other conversations shown in the trailer confirm that full voice acting won't be in the game. Instead, it'll be like Awakening where the voice actors say key phrases from the conversation. Unfortunately, it doesn't go into why the player was raised by the Nor, but the player character is almost guaranteed to be the Lord class. What's not clear is who the girl in this scene is. She's wearing some kind of horned ornament on her head to make her stand out, yet we never spotted her again in the trailer. 
Perhaps she's some kind of guard that led Kamui to meet Ryoma? Another reunion happens soon after where we get a few more clues to Kamui's past. The red-headed girl is named Hanoka and she's laying her head on Kamui's chest in relief so there's definitely a connection there. She says, All this time I kept believing that we'd meet again. This outright confirms that the player was not taken to the Nora as a baby. There was enough time spent in Hoshido to form strong bonds. But this raises more questions. Did an accident happen where you were saved and raised by the Nora royal family? Do you suffer from amnesia? Or did something a bit more original happen? At any rate, the other girl in this scene is your blood-related little sister, Sakura. We get a better look at her in a cutscene where she's saying how happy she is that she can go with Kamui. It's not clear how much older Kamui is to Sakura or if she knew him from before, but it seems like she has a connection already. The location of this scene also looks to be taking place in a similar area to the one in the beginning of the trailer with the dancing girl. There's no sign of a pier, but we can see the lake next to these woods. Once again, it's difficult to say when these scenes take place in relation to one another, but we'll get to the dancer later at the very least. After this point in the trailer, most of the Hoshido scenes take place after the player chooses a side. However, during the direct itself, there were other scenes from the game shown. One showcases Kamui talking with Kazuhana from the previous trailer. Here we learn that she works as Sakura's subordinate and considers herself the most trusted. The other guy, Tsubaki, agrees with Kazuhana that they'll be joining Kamui for an upcoming battle, but does have a problem with her saying that she's Sakura's most trusted subordinate. It's mostly flavor text, but it does show that Tsubaki works for Sakura as well and that he and Kazahana are a kind of honor guard. What's really interesting though is the background as this place seems to be a possible makeshift hospital to care for the wounded or sick. It indicates the war, or at least a few skirmishes, have already taken place. Another scene features Sakura. She's approached by a man named Saizo and a woman named Orochi who have a message. Wherever these two came from, Sakura notices they had it rough as both of them are wounded. It turns out that something bad is going down at the country's border and both Ryoma and a character we haven't met yet, Takumi, are in trouble. The dialogue ends there but as the portraits fade in and out we get to see all the people present. There's Saizo and Orochi, the pink haired girl is probably Sakura, and we can see that Kamui and even the dancer are here. We're not sure who the other two characters are but the one seems to be the same class as Saizo. But we'll return to this scene once we get into the new gameplay shown. For now, let's shift over to the Nor and get a better idea of who they are. Naturally, the first person we see is the old king of the country who we later learn is called Garen. Based on his demeanor and the events of this cutscene in particular, it seems as if he is the one to trigger the war with Hoshido. And that trigger may be this Hoshido man that is being riddled with arrows by a horde of soldiers. His hair is similar to Ryoma, but it's not the same character. But that could mean that he's part of the royal family and something like this could easily trigger a war. The question is, what is this man doing in Nor? The western design of the surrounding buildings confirms this to be the case. The incredible thing though is that this man survives since Garen says, I'll let you live to do my bidding. At least we think he survived. Could it be possible that he sacrificed himself to save his son? And in this moment of tragedy, Garen takes a very young Kamui into his service. It would explain why he's reaching toward the camera in the cutscene, something that's often done to involve the player but not show him or her. However, if this isn't the case, just what is Garen reaching for? Later on, we get an overhead look at what is likely Nor's capital city. It is positively massive with a series of walls all around. The land itself is very dark and overcast, giving off an oppressive feeling that truly feels at odds with Hoshido's capital. But the most telling thing about this layout is the walls. It indicates an extremely class-based society. Just looking from above, we can see much of the outer ring seems dedicated to farmlands, while the right side and interior rings are condensed with housing and likely a poorer class. Uniquely, the center circle is where the castle should be, but it actually goes deeper into the ground. It's difficult to see exactly, but could this be an inverted structure? Or is it something else entirely there? We then get a conversation between Kamui and Marx, though we're not sure where and nor this is taking place. But Marx is impressed with the player, commenting, Good work, you've become strong. This is likely after a very early mission when players are still getting introduced to the game. Unfortunately, we don't have a name for the third character, though we do see more of him as the trailer continues. Instead, the next major character we meet is Kamala. She's talking with Kamui outside of a Hoshido building that was likely just captured. She says that she was worried about him. Could she be the Nor equivalent of Anoka? Or is she part of the royal family too? 
After all, she is wearing a dragon head shaped tiara that closely resembles the one on Marx's shield. Next is a cutscene of a little girl pulling the player along. She calls out to us as Big Brother, so she's likely part of the royal family as well, and definitely the Nora counterpart to Sakura. We can also see that she's wearing Nora's crest on the back of her dress. But what is it that she wants to show? Is this part of the game's opening cutscene? We really don't know as the sequence is incredibly short. But then there's the scene where Kamui stands before Garen. Along with the old king are Kamala, your surrogate sister, Marx, and the man that was standing next to Marx before. Garen states that he expects great things from the player who just responds with a yes sir before leaving. Once again, the Nora throne gives off a much darker vibe than the one in Hoshido. But more importantly, could this be the scene that sends Kamui to the other country? Is it an infiltration mission where he's found out and learns of his true family? It's then time for the key moment of the game where the player must decide between Hoshido and Nor. News has come out stating that this moment doesn't occur until Chapter 6, so this likely means that you'll have three chapters with each side beforehand so you can have a better sense of who these characters are. The staging of the scene is also quite classic, with Kamui standing in the center while Ryoma is calling to him from the right, and Marx does the same from the left. Both are essentially saying to join their side. And to emphasize the stakes further, the other characters are shown as well. Sakura, who appears to be a cleric, a lance-wielding Hisoka, and a new character who's an archer. This may be the Takumi that was referred to earlier during the urgent message. Sakura even calls you brother as they await your decision. On the north side is your sister who could also be a cleric, Kamala who's not holding a weapon, and the young man we've seen several times now. He's holding a tome making him a mage. The final scene before the choice shows what the stakes will be as every character flashes across the screen. But what's vaguely amusing is that despite all of the obvious differences between Nor and Hoshido, the four characters on either side seem to match their counterpart's story role on the other side almost perfectly. The new Fire Emblem is going for a sense of symmetry that not only makes the choice tougher, but clearly shows that neither side is inherently evil, Garen likely being the exception of course. But it will make for a unique game where you could even feel bad for killing enemy units. And the moment must be super important as the trailer barely shows us what happens beyond a dialogue box. The first one showing the player choosing Hoshido, and the next one selecting Nor. Whichever choice is made, the other side won't take it well. Marx outright calls the player a traitor while Ryoma tells him to come at him. This conversation actually leads directly into a fight between Kamui and Ryoma. But what's more interesting is that this seems to take place in the same area with a bridge from the first trailer. There we saw Hisoka, who is indeed a Pegasus Knight as a later cutscene shows, attack an enemy unit. As the battle transitioned, the armies of both sides appeared. That same effect happens with Ryoma, lending further credence to this being the exact point when the decision is made or at least when you first battle Ryoma. We highly doubt he'll die here specifically when the player defeats him. From there, more scenes play showing the results of your choice. One shows Ryoma on his knees while everything around him burns. The only thing we can think of to cause a reaction like this in the middle of a fire is that something happened to the young woman who gave a speech before. Maybe she'll be assassinated if the Nor side is chosen. Of course, it's entirely possible that Ryoma could react like this if it's just the palace in flames. After all, this is the place where he was born, raised, and called home. It gives the sense that the stakes are more personal in this Fire Emblem. Next is a confrontation with Tsubaki, the archer. He's accusing the player of betraying Hoshido while aiming an arrow at you. And it seems like he's leading a force against a Nora village as all of the surrounding buildings are in a western style. Likewise, we get a sequence of Camilla walking slyly towards the camera, her arms outstretched. Her entire demeanor gives off a mocking tone, which probably means this is a part that happens if Hoshido is chosen. More importantly, both of these scenes with Tsubaki and Kamala could be the prelude to boss battles against them. We wouldn't be surprised if key moments of the story have you facing off against these important characters. We don't have much context for the scene with the mage, but he is showing off some of his power. As he conjures magic in his hand, bits of rock fly around him indicating that he's quite powerful. It doesn't even look like he's trying hard. Then, finally, there's Marks as he points his sword at the player. This seems to be a confrontational showdown as the surrounding area looks like the Nor Palace, even containing the country symbol on the right side. Marx is showing no hesitation in fighting you, going so far as to say, as for this justice you believe in, prepare to receive it. These are just a few minor instances of the way this choice will play out, but the major one is how the game is structured. 
The Hoshido campaign will have a traversable map like Fire Emblem Awakening, allowing players to level up their characters outside of storyline battles. On the other hand, the Nor campaign will not allow for battles outside of the storyline. Instead, players will go from chapter to chapter like many Fire Emblem games of the past. To make up for the greater linearity though, the campaign is being promised to have more intrigue to its story, which makes sense since it's also the side that Garen is on. But that's just story and character analysis. While there wasn't much, we did get a few new details on the gameplay, and right off the bat, we get the biggest news. The pair-up and duel system from Awakening is indeed back. We even have text here showing that these two teaming up increases critical avoidance by 5. However, looking at the enemy side, we see that they can pair up as well. This will most definitely place greater importance on both of these systems. As the fight continues, we can see that the ally classes look to be a thief, or maybe a ninja, and a fighter who uses axes, or in this case, a hammer. The enemy units are an archer and a cavalier. However, these units don't seem to be generic designs. We suspected there would be major confrontations with main characters after picking a side, but could we even fight characters that would have been allies? It's definitely pointing in that direction. The battle arena itself is in a Hoshido fort with damage having been done to a lantern in the background, but this is actually the second time we've seen this location. In the scene where Sakura receives news that Ryoma is in trouble, there's a moment when the character portraits fade. In the background, we not only saw all of the characters, but the area they were in too. Here we can see the same white walls and even the lanterns. It's not a major revelation, but it does give a greater sense to how the game will play out. Not only that, but new options while exploring the map seem to be available as well. Something happens that creates or reforms a rock bridge, allowing the characters to cross. A text option does appear, but we couldn't quite translate the upper option. The lower text is the choice to wait, but obviously the upper option activates the bridge in some way. On the opposite side is a Hoshido-style house. Can players visit that, or will it mainly be used as a fort? Otherwise, we see some more characters, though we suspect the lower one to be Kamala, while the upper one could be your Nora sister. The only problem with that guess is that she has blonde hair in the cutscene, but pink hair here. More intriguing is the design of the health bars. Both Kamui and the upper characters go from blue to orange, but Kamui has a little more of an orange gradient. Meanwhile, the character on the horse's health bar goes from blue to light green to yellow. Why is there a difference? Does it give a better indication of a character's max health at a glance? Or could health be changing in some other way? Finally, we have this scene where Kamui confronts a monster, the same kind we saw Mark's defeat in the first trailer. Thanks to a dialogue box, we know that it's called a Nosferatu, but that's about it. Kamui does say that it being in the area points to something worse. But what that worst thing is, we have no clue. Is someone controlling the Nosferatu, or are they equivalent to roaming monsters in RPGs? Okay, we're almost done here, but we have one final thing to look at. The dancer from the first trailer. She's the first one to appear in this new trailer, walking on a pier in a forest near a lake. She's singing as she walks while lines of text lay out the game's story. What's interesting is that these questions seem definite. They're not questions of this versus that. It's the idea of stopping conflict altogether. Could that mean the ultimate goal of this game is to bring total peace between the two countries and not just stopping one completely? The dancer's singing also seems to have some kind of effect on the water, getting rid of all the ripples. Could this be the same pool of water that she falls into during the previous trailer? We think it's a distinct possibility. She then turns to face someone as if she's been caught. Could this be the player or someone with ill intentions that causes her to fall into the water? Well, we think it could be both. We'll explain soon. In fact, we think this same scene continues during this gameplay sequence where Kamui is talking with the dancer, telling her that he was born in Hoshido, but raised by the Noor. But there's a major difference between this sequence and the cutscene. Despite having a pier, the surrounding forest is dark and looks almost as if it's decaying. Is this actually the case, or did it become dark since the cutscene did show that it was sunset? While we don't know for sure, we do know that the player and the dancer are linked no matter what. The best indication of this are the scenes that repeat from the first trailer. As she dances, the outfit changes from white to dark purple. We saw both of these colors at different times before, but here it seems different outcomes are being shown despite the scene playing out exactly the same. It happens again later on, making us think that some story sequences will still happen no matter what, though the clothes this girl wears will change. But what is the reason for this change? 
And why would the same thing still happen when the locations and surroundings in Hoshido and Noor are so different? But these quick changes between the two outfits tell us that she will always be with Kamui. After all, she does seem to be the most important character, and she's linked to Kamui far more than we thought. But let's focus on Kamui's design for a second. No matter which gender is chosen, the basic outfit stays the same outside of a few bits of flair here and there. But neither gender is wearing shoes or really footwear of any kind. We can even see this in the scene with Garen. It's just a single strap. It's too deliberate not to be important. We just don't know why it's important. The other noteworthy design decision is Kamui's pointed ears. This is a distinct trait of the Divine Dragon Tribe, and we already saw the mark of the Exalt on Ryoma's clothing. Since Kamui was born in Hoshido, it's not unrealistic to think there's a connection. In fact, there is. During one gameplay sequence, we see a pair-up of Kamui and a female armor knight. And this is definitely Kamui. Note the bare feet. But rather than attack normally like we saw in the first trailer, he transforms into some kind of beast. It has wings, but its legs resemble that of a horse. It also has a long tail and neck, and a large pair of horns. Could this be a dragon like the Manakete? All the connections we've seen so far point in that direction. Perhaps this is why Garen raised the player as a child. And remember before when the dancer turned? We said that she was facing someone who wished her ill intent, or the player, before claiming it was both. Look at the scene in the first trailer when she's being attacked underwater. The beast that's attacking her is the same one that Kamui transformed into. So it seems the player won't be able to control this ability right away. It can actually make him attack the people around him. All of these elements make for an incredibly intriguing game. How will it all come together? What other differences are there between the Nor and the Hoshido? Unfortunately, we still have a while to wait for that answer. While Japan is getting the game in June, it's not arriving in North America until 2016. Whether the two versions containing the two campaigns will be separate or together is another question entirely, but we're positive we'll get more information on the new Fire Emblem come E3. Of course, let us know if we missed anything in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at GameXplain to keep up with everything we do. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned to GameXplain for more on Fire Emblem and other things gaming.